okay now what is load testing right now uh, you would have seen a website like uh, any website you can take up access bank is there even our social media websites are there like facebook linkedin okay now over there before releasing these websites they would have done a lot of load testing load testing is when you are testing a particular software with respect to the number of anticipated users now i know i have designed the software that it should work for 1000 users right so what i would do is i would basically uh, start the testing of the software from 10 users then i will increase the users gradually i won't increase the users at one go okay i'll uh, increase the users in a gradual manner let us say if i do first of all from uh, 100 users then i would see the load testing with respect to 500 users then 800 and then i will conduct a testing for 1000 users okay so this is how load testing works and what are the uh, figures that we are getting in this uh, kind of testing the those analysis are made and they are shared with the customer and the client okay now for example at 100 users this page was taking more time to load okay for 500 users the payment page was not coming up properly there were some of the gui issues that users were experiencing okay then at 1000 users if i even if i am not able to log in itself into the website okay so these are the issues that uh, you will come across when you are doing load testing now stress testing is testing for users beyond the limit okay now uh, let's say your website was supposed to uh, handle thousand users at a time so what a tester would do in context of st stress testing they would start the testing from 1000 month user okay so it is expected that for first thousand users it is going to now when you are testing for 1000 month user and beyond that figure then what is the behavior of the application what is the response of the application in that uh, context okay now there is a uh, difference between load testing and stress testing okay. now load testing is uh, you are finding the application behavior with the expected load as i had mentioned right there were thousand users that were expected and you are testing the software with respect to those users and when you go beyond the limit it is stress testing okay now uh, if the build is stable then of course you can go for load testing okay and once you you are completed with the load testing from your side then only you should start with the stress testing okay you should never start the stress testing before the load testing because it is a wastage of time and it is wasted of resources as well because uh, from load testing we will come to know okay now the build is stable now we can proceed with uh, another round of testing okay. then so so whenever in an interview uh, you will get this question first which testing you should do should i do uh, should should we prefer load testing first or stress testing so you should also always go for uh, load testing first and then stress testing okay i hope uh, i am audible right Okay, uh, Gaurav wants to ask some question. Load testing means application should not crash or be slow. Am I getting it? Yes. So in none of the testing, whether it is load testing or stress testing, the response of the website should be uh, smooth. It should handle, it should give a proper appropriate response, whether you are conducting load testing or stress testing, because for load testing, the customer or client would have given you a certain figure that they know the future of our website will go and meet this this num this much number of users right from a business perspective so they will give you that number and they will ask you to test now over here one more criteria i would like to add in the organizations when you join as a software tester or if if you are working in quality assurance or quality control team right whenever they are involving you in the requirements grooming Requirements grooming means uh, requirements discussion. They are analyzing the requirement with you. Project manager is there, business analyst is there. There is a development team, architects are there. So you should ask these questions that, uh, hey buddy, uh, the architecture which you are uh, going to develop, the platform which we are going to take for this software, would they be 
able to handle the load of this much number of users and that number of users you will get from the customer or client okay so you should be proactive in asking these questions and within the team itself so that at the end when you release the software they don't come and ask you the questions that look, this person has not tested the load uh, testing for a website and now we are facing issues with it okay and many banks you know uh, consider an example of hdfc bank icic or any bank banking software you take you take an uh, example of cosec software in which uh, there are uh, applications related to you know they monitor when when the employee is coming up and when they are leaving the uh, organization so all these softwares are connected to the load because we don't know at a time how many records will be handled by the software right so this plays a very important role load testing and stress testing okay i hope this is clear and let this difference is done yeah now coming to the next third uh, third type of testing that is installation testing okay now for example uh, you have got a desktop exe product and uh, you need to install it so at the time of installation testing you have to keep in mind whether the software was uh, been able to install properly and smoothly on any of the uh, os right over here os you can take as uh, currently windows server 2012 2016 data center and all these machines are in demand so if it's a heavy application right if it's a thick client then you should go for uh, testing on all these oss and then you can also compare uh, you can take a windows 10 or windows 8 again this os platform requirements you will get from the client or customer if these requirements are not there in requirement analysis then definitely you should proactively ask the questions to the team the more early the questions you frame up of these kinds of testing the easier it would be for you to get uh, rid of you know these kind of defects in the software and in, in installation testing again whenever the product is installed so at the time of installation uh, the look and feel of the product right it should not be such that uh, the software shows a simple progress bar that it is installing and thus the user is sitting before the machine for 10 to 15 minutes and they don't know what actually is happening in the software at least some kind of progress bar should be there so these are a few of the announcements that you should uh, suggest to the team so that uh, you can give a better quality product to the team okay uh, you can suggest them for a uh, progress bar the progress bar percentage will help a user to know whether the software has been installed and how much percentage it has been installed let us say from 10 percent then it moves to 15 and like this it should go till 100 percent right so installation testing will come in picture at that time then there is also a eula agreement okay that is a copyright and a licensing kind of a thing so if you are testing an exe product then you should you have to make sure that it is uh, having a proper digital signature digital signature means uh, for example when you we we can take a simple example of a signature when you go to a bank and until and unless you don't do a signature right nobody can uh, use any of the money that is there in your account right so that is a ownership so digital signature means you should uh, the company is having the ownership of that tool of that product which you are installing on the machine okay so that digital signature should be properly there you should have a proper copyright here so when you see any of the websites over there you will see uh, there is a, a small line written at the end of the page copyright 2020 now year 2020 is going on so they will be having a copyright of 2020 now after december they have to uh, make the changes in such a way that the copyright year needs to be changed to 2021 right so these are all the facts that would come to uh, you this is a normal uh, any analysis that you need to do as a software test again after installation the product if it's a web application it should get open in google chrome browser mozilla firefox browser ie browser and if a customer is telling it should open it should support opera and safari browser then it should support that also okay then one more thing is uh, during the installation testing uh, if 
if it requires a dependency of some database. Now, what if that database access is not there to the user, right? What validation message you are getting from the software and is it user friendly? Is it giving a proper corrective action that needs to be taken? Okay, so these are all the aspects that you should think when you are doing installation testing because installation testing is going to be the heart of your software. It is the very first interaction that a user will do with your software. Okay, and if the installation does not happen, if the installation itself is not successful or it is very much complex, it is complicated, then definitely customer will come, client will come, they'll have their questions, okay, on the team, on the engineering side. So installation testing plays a very vital role in the success of a software. Coming then to the security testing. Okay, now uh, consider a big customers like AT&T, Citibank, and all these customers are, you know, very much uh, having keen interest on the security testing point of view. Now, let's say if the uh, if you have to enter some credentials on the login screen, okay, and uh, there are two fields for now: username, password, and you have to click on login button. Now, what if the you enter username and password, but um, when when you are trying to log in? A certain person is able to, you know, uh, do man in the middle attack, and he's able to get your credentials. It might be using uh, Fiddler software, or you know, even if you are trying to log in into the software using Google Chrome browser, and if you go to the task manager and you take out a dump of your uh, whatever the activity that you are doing in the browser over there, also credentials should not be displayed in the plain text. They should be encrypted. You know, because encryption is very much required from a software point of view, we cannot uh, leverage all these kinds of loopholes in a software when you are actually testing it. So you have to take care of all these things, your credentials, your authenticity, your authentication, authorization are all the aspects of security testing. Let's say if a HR person is there, and you have got a responsibility to test a certain website. And there are a couple of pages in that software. One page is belonging to the uh, HR and other folks, recruiters and all those. And one page is belonging to the finance people. Now they have kept the authorization in such a way. Now, for example, Rakesh is there. He's an HR. He's having, he needs to have access only of the HR page because he belongs to the HR department only. Now, when I'm trying to log into the software, I should be able to navigate or see only the HR page. I should not be able to view or edit or delete any of the items on the finance page as well, right? So this is a break in the uh, authorization, okay? The, the users which are not authorized to access a particular page, though they are able to access that particular page, okay? So that is a security breach. You can tell it as vulnerability. And there are a lot of tools that could help you to do this security testing. One very important software that is available open source, free of cost, that is Fiddler. It is highly recommended for every software tester to use Fiddler software to learn at least this software, how they will work. Fiddler is there, then show password is there. So we were discussing about the uh, compromising of the credentials, right? So uh, in the show password tool, actually, if uh, you use that tool if any of you get the time, if you download it on your machine and if you are using that tool then and, and there is some password field that you need to test. So you can open that show password tool and you can mouse over on the password field itself. So you will come to know whether the characters are encrypted or whether they are displayed in the plain text. Okay. So now many of the customers have HTTPS as well as HTTP sites. So the credentials are not compromised in HTTPS sites, but you have to take care that it should also not be compromised in the HTTP site as well. Okay, so that is all aspects of uh, security testing. Next is volume testing. Okay, now for example, uh, consider a social media platform like LinkedIn or Facebook is there. Um, there are many users available 
in this uh, uh, on on the Facebook as well as LinkedIn to use it, right? So what they would do actually, they would uh, they would use the software, and these softwares are being used across the world by n number of users. So consider the transactions that are happening on their database, whether it might be on the cloud or something, right? Consider any of the application, the amount of transactions that are happening with respect to the database, the amount of uh, file uploads, or let us say if a software is writing a file at the backend, they are using some .bat file, they are using some .xml file. So the amount of uh, capturing data into that files that is happening, so that would be so much of time consuming. So what actually with her, how, how your software is behaving with respect to amount of data that is coming into the software. So those all things you have to take care from a volume testing. Okay. So far so good. I, uh, if you have any of the questions, you can park it uh, in the chat itself. We will definitely, uh, I'll, I'll try to answer them at the end of the 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, if I'm going too fast, you can let me know. I'll decrease the speed or if I'm going too slow, then you can tell me I'll increase the speed. Okay. Uh, now next is compatibility testing. Okay. So compatibility testing, I think we covered few of the points that is a software should be compatible from all point of view. For example, if you are installing the software on your local machine and then you have to make sure that the software works and it is compatible with respect to uh, your virtual machine or these days AWS machines are coming up as your machines are coming. Then there are rec space also. So these are all the, uh, the you know, technological terms that have started coming up because now the uh, industry is moving towards the cloud side. So your software should be compatible. Let it be with respect to the browsers or it is OS operating system or it is machines. Right. Uh, next is configuration and performance testing. And then it is recovery, reliability, accessibility, GUI software testing, and usability testing. Okay. So these all testing will take some time. So what I would do is I would uh, take a pause for now and I'll be open to the questions. I think I have covered five to six types of testing. So if you have any questions or any of the doubt, whether it is minor or it is major, please feel free to ask. You can type in the chat box 